What happens if you combine this awesome framework laptop with this Fedora distribution? Let's find out. Hi, this is Carsten with OpenTech and while you are here, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell since it helps. And now let's install Fedora 36 on the framework laptop. Let's customize it and let's see how it feels. Let's get into it. So the first thing you need to do is to prepare your USB stick. I assume you have done that and I did it myself. So I inserted it and started the framework laptop and pressed the F12 key to get into the selection of the boot device. And then I selected the USB stick. Now we are in the desktop of our Fedora Live USB environment. And here we first of all need to connect to a Wi-Fi nearby to download the latest updates. Then we hit install to hard drive. And the first thing we now do is to select the system language. I have a German framework laptop, so German is pre-selected. I select English, hit continue, accept the information about the pre-release software. I then adjust my keyboard settings. You probably don't need to do that. And after having done that, I remove the unnecessary keyboard layout and then hit the done button. Now we can select installation destination. I already had some operating systems on my machine. So I go with a custom installation. I remove a previous Fedora 36 installation I used for testing. I confirm that I want to have all the data deleted and then I hit the click here to create them automatically link and then hit done. Now I need to accept the changes and after having done that, we can begin the installation process. The whole installation process might take a few minutes, so it might be a good idea to grab a cup of tea and enjoy yourself. After a few minutes, the installation will be finished. We now need to restart our machine. So we select restart from the menu and the installation process is now successfully behind us. After having installed your base operating system, we need to do the initial setup and customizations. So we have now restarted our system and we hit start setup. First of all, I personally uncheck automatic problem reporting and location services, but you can do whatever you like. And then I enable third party repositories. Now you could connect your online accounts. I don't do that, so I hit skip. And then I define a user and give that user a strong and secure password. After hitting next, the base setup is now done. Now it is time to make the system truly ours. So we start the settings tool and then we switch over to the appearance section. Here, I first of all enable the dark theme and select a stunning wallpaper. I truly love this one. Now we can go through the other settings. Here in the display section, you can see your currently selected resolution and obviously adjusted. The same is true for the scaling. Within the mouse and touchpad section, you can 
adjust and enable natural scrolling speeds and so on and so forth and when you look at the other settings you can basically make sure that everything is according to your liking finally we head over to the about section and here we give the device a proper name i call it framework minus fedora okay now let's go a bit deeper into the customization what we want to do now is to download the gnome tweaks tool so i open the console and enter sudo dnf install gnome minus tweaks after having authenticated the gnome tweak tool is installed and we can open it from the application launcher here i head over to the top bar section and i enable weekday and seconds display as well as the week numbers within the calendar i also want to have maximize and minimize buttons and i want to have them on the right side of my windows within the windows section i enable the center new windows option now the system looks and feels great to me. Perfect, we are nearly done now. Let's now do a system update. There are two different ways to do that. You can either use the software utility or as I do, use the DNF tool with the command update minus minus refresh. You always have to authenticate and then the updates are identified and downloaded. The whole process might take a while, so stay relaxed. Fedora gives you quite a good overview of what is currently going on. In my case, it lasted roughly 20 to 25 minutes, but that was basically due to a bad network connection. Keep in mind to repeat that process at least once a week. Fedora is releasing a lot of updates every single week. So in order to keep your system in a current state and safe and secure, you might want to do that regularly. As you know, the framework laptop is shipped with a fingerprint reader and i'm happy to report that the fingerprint reader is detected and installed automatically so we can now head over to the settings tool and into the user configuration here we click on unlock authenticate and then we can select fingerprint login here we can select scan new finger, select the finger, authenticate again, and then we register the finger with the system. Unfortunately, at least in my case, that was not a truly smooth experience. It took me quite a while, but in the end, I got my fingerprint registered. To me, it would have not been necessary since I prefer logging into my system using a traditional password. So unfortunately, I have no experience with how solid the process is when working with the system, but I would be very happy if you would report your experience with the fingerprint scanner and Fedora 36 in the comments below. Great. We now have installed and set up everything. So let's have a look at the resource utilization. I just restarted my framework laptop and now I open the HTOP utility. And if you look at the readings here, you can see that the system consumes roughly around 1 to 1.2 
gigabytes of memory and is pretty much idle when you look at the course of the system. That memory consumption feels a bit too much from my perspective, but on the other hand, I have 32 gigabytes of memory, so I can live with that. And now let's have a look at the disk utilization. So we open the disk utility and then we select the Fedora home partition. And as you can see, it has a disk footprint of roughly five gigabytes, which is fine to me. I don't know. Using NeoFetch always gives me that kind of feeling that I truly own and run a Linux system. So apologies, it has to happen. So I installed NeoFetch and now I open it. And as you can see, the laptop is reported properly. We are running on a framework laptop with GNOME 42, 32 gigabytes of RAM and everything appears to be nice and shiny. I installed Fedora on my framework laptop roughly three weeks ago. And since then, I used it every single day. The installation process was smooth and straightforward. The usage is awesome. The system is fast, it is responsive, and I have not witnessed any kind of breakdowns or whatever. So I can highly recommend installing Fedora on your framework laptop. The combination of the framework laptop and Fedora is truly polished. The system runs great. Battery time is appropriate. The framework laptop and Fedora make up for a truly great combination. So what do you think? Is it a good idea to install Fedora on your framework laptop? I, as already pointed out, love this combination. But let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And while you are there, don't forget to like, to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. Since it helps. Thanks for watching. See you next time. And don't forget, let's make the world a better place now more than ever. Thanks for dropping by. See you later. Bye.